<laughs> okay, dude. So now, now we get on to our Twitter Q and A. Listeners, thank you so much. If you're wondering how to get in touch with us, it's Twitter at Team Cape and Cow. Twitter at Team Cape and Cow. Direct message us. We do not mind. If you follow us, we will follow you back. We are all about the conversation and just talking superhero stuff. If you want to get in touch with us on YouTube, just leave a comment in the section. We will answer your question here. Now, Ashley, first question. What we got? Cool. I've got Philly Goat here um, asking, have you read the Injustice comics or the Civil War comics? Think about giving them a read. Personally, I haven't read them. Mm. Mm. I've read the Injustice comics. I've read the first Civil War. Injustice, as we've just been talking about, man, it is a crazy frigging alternate take on the DC Universe, man. This is a perfect time to jump in because you've got Injustice. You haven't played the Injustice game. Don't know if you have played it, but if it's gotten you into it enough that you want to read more, there's four years of content and it all takes place sort of prior, giving you the background, giving you what's been happening in this Injustice Universe to get it to that point. It's seriously good. And a lot of people thought, oh, it's just gimmicky video game tie-in. The truth lies in how long it's gone on for. It's been going since the frigging game came out, and it is some seriously good moments. Some seriously, you'll probably see like you know Instagram pictures of some like insane you know sort of DC moments. Oh, yeah, you're thinking, yeah, yeah. how did they do that? It's happened in the Injustice comic. I'm getting you know like oh, you know you think <laughs> that would never happen. It happened in Injustice. <laughs> you know that's what they do. It's great fun, and the fact that it's all sort of like it's not canon, you, you can detach from it, but. There's so much love in those yeah. comics. Dude, Billy Goat, man. Check the Injustice comics out. Civil War, Sam, you feel this one? Uh, Civil War, well, the graphic novel is very different from the film. Oh, I feel weird. I feel like I'm taking Steve's spotlight. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, the movie's Steve very would different. love this quote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can tell me to shut up. Yeah. Um, the movie's very different from the graphic novel. Um, what I would say in terms of giving them a read, it's the perfect time for it because it's like no one's told you about Game of Thrones or yeah. like a show that everyone else has been watching for five years mm. and then you get everything all at once you've got Civil War which was released back in I think 2006 that's and now, old yeah, so that's, that's an old wow. comic that's, that's ten classic. years man yeah. the Wuthering Heights Ooh. of Marvel yeah. Not yeah. really, but um, <laughs> but yeah. See that was back in two thousand and six, and now whilst you could be reading that, like the the new Civil War two stuff is happening, which I'm not really not like I don't know that much about it. But I'm again, waiting until it, it finishes. Yeah, yeah, I like me to too, man. With, just with get collections. Events, yeah. But it's Captain America versus Iron Man again, um, I believe, and it's just <laughs> apparently there's this guy um, Ulysses. Like the Greek name Ulysses. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's what you mean. I don't know how to it before. I don't want a Boyega moment. The cool thing is, <laughs> the, the cool thing is, you've got Civil War, you've got the sequel already. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that, yeah, just give it a read. You might as well. What else are you going to do with your time? <laughs> might be very good advice. Yeah. He's a very busy guy, Sam. Dude, yeah. thank you, thank you so much for your question. On to the next one, Sam. What we got? Oh, it's my turn your now. drink down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is from SDGS Geek Squad. In South Blanket. Devon. South Devon Geek Squad, man. Thank South you guys, Devon man. Squad. Um, at Team Kevin Cow, what did you think of Arrow Season 4 and Flash Season 2? I'm going to just defect from this question straight away. Haven't had time to get into these, like... Um, shows You're more of the Netflix much. Marvel fan. I'm more, yeah, know. Netflix Marvel. I'm moving on the Netflix yeah. Marvel side. So, so we'll have to I'm going to field this, yeah. guys, because <laughs> I am up to date with all of the seasons. What do, what do I think? Of, oh, man. Oh, man. I know, I, Steve, man, it's a shame he's missing out on this. No, he's looking after little, oh, yeah. little baby. He's looking after little baby. Yeah, Steve and myself are up to date on this. So we will be doing spoiler reviews for both these shows as soon as we're able. It's just crazy busy. As you know, weddings and stuff going on. But, yeah, my initial thoughts on The Flash, season one, amazing. Great introduction to this very cool character who, frankly, it strangely hasn't been given enough of his due. It's ridiculous. He's only just getting his movie. But, you know, at least we're getting his movie. Grant Gustin is awesome. Um, I'm, I'm t I don't know if you, if you watch the shows. You know, that'd be cool. Uh, if you haven't, if you have, you're just sort of looking for a sort of a response. Um, yeah, I, I love the way there's no holds bars. Nothing held, is held back with The Flash. It's just like, you want a different planet? We've got a different planet. You want time travel? we got it. You want like running through interdimensional gateways? you got it. It is a show for fans. It's watched by the fans, and it's kept going by the fans. There is that coffee shop sort of CW appeal. And to be honest, I've got a CG... CG, uh, CG Judah's Mug. It's the coffee shop where they all drink. Oh, okay. So, you know... <laughs> 
I love that aspect to it. I've never had a problem with that. I'm a big Smallville fan, all those sorts of, you know, One Tree Hill superhero shows. You know, I, I love that sort of stuff growing up. So, yeah, I mean, The Flash, I'm, you know, I, I prefer it more to Arrow. Where Arrow is at now? Arrow started off a bit shaky. Season 2, I think Arrow Season 2 is one of the best superhero seasons ever of any show. They do not give a shit, and they, yeah, they borrow a lot from Batman. But why the fuck not, man? You, you, you know, if you're only as good as your influences. At the end of the day, you know, there's criticisms. Green Arrow isn't Green Arrow as he is in the comics. He's less of a hippie and sort of more of a vengeful sort of dude. But I don't mind, man. They they go great places. My issues with Arrow sort of season four is that they've sort of forgotten what made themselves so great, and by giving into sort of fan demand by spoilers, um, uh. Oliver and Felicity getting together they've lost a bit of the magic of them what if and the whole fact of for me a good hero never really should get the girl and it's kind of weird when he gets the girl and then keeps on fighting crime so I don't know so maybe I'm too into Batman in that yeah. respect so but yeah I like where it's going I have to say the end of season 4 for Arrow, I was very disappointed with. Um, the final frame kind of redeemed it, but there was some hokey shit going down in that final couple of episodes. And I kind of just want Stephen Amell to go back to being the focus of that show because as great as the supporting cast are, he makes that show, man. He's a, he's a great, great actor, great guy on screen and off, it looks like. Check out some of his charity work. You just got to check out his Facebook page. But yeah, thank you for that question, man. We haven't talked enough, I think, about Arrow and The Flash. Um, and CW on TV in general. So, yeah, it's great to sort of get my opinions out there. It's nice <laughs> stuff, man. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, I've got a cool question from regular Cape and Cow listener. This guy, love this guy, man. We're all talking to him on Twitter. Just let's give this guy a thumbs up, man. Jim Bob. Thank oh, you, thanks, dudes. <laughs> yeah. Dudes, mate, this guy is Batman fan to his core. He's always getting in touch with us on the Twitter page, and I just got to give a shout out. He is, dude. He is awesome. <laughs> and he gets great questions, man. Batman for life, this dude. Um, so, after listening to a whole podcast of Robin Talk and Holy Batcast, if you haven't checked out Holy Batcast, check him out. It's a great Batman podcast. Um, I'm on something of a Robin Crusade. A Robin Crusade is an epic sentence. As I admit to not reading much solo Robin arcs in the past, who is your favourite Robin and why or do you simply not have time for him in the Batman universe and prefer to see Bats work alone? Thanks, fellas. Keep up the good work, your friend Jim. Jim, thanks, man. Thanks for listening. We're going to answer your question. Let's just go round table. Who's your favourite? Do we like Robin? Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. So you're in good company, Jim. We all love Robin. I, yeah. I would understand what he means from a comic book point of view, I guess, because yeah. the very little I've read on Robin... Um, him working alone or kind of him as the focus doesn't really work I feel that he really thrives off being the sidekick to Batman yeah. until he's a little yeah. bit older like that kind of Red Robin like verging on Nightwing kind yeah. of thing yeah. um, but no I think he compliments Batman very well because he's whereas Batman's looking at it so seriously and so yeah it's more like hired. yeah like he, he's genuinely just this kid who's yeah. like been trained to yeah kick the shit out of people mm -hmm. just like this he still has a guy. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. you know um, where, like, if we've got a Nightwing Nightwing's like the in between bit of mm. that you know it's like a it really is like a you know Robin the young boy Nightwing's like young the adult man. I guess yeah, and the then man. Batman is this kind of jaded character but no I love Robin I think he's a great character yeah. I really do and I only fell in love with him even more during the Arkham games as well oh, oh, really? yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah I thought he was just Great. That wasn't me like tearing up. What? How do you feel about Robin? Yeah, I think he's uh, honestly just as Sam said. You know, um, exactly. <laughs> just put exactly. Did you listen to <laughs> me? <laughs> just, <laughs> exactly what you said. Uh, I think the first time I fell in love with Robin has to be um, Batman arc uh, animated series. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. He was just. I love that show, man. We've yeah, got, we've got so, to do a retrospective. We need to on that do it. Show, I've man. got all of them. So. Oh god, I've been watching just... it with Grayson. My son's called Grayson. <laughs> Jim. I'm, so I'm do you sure. like Robin? Oh mate, <laughs> yeah. I love Robin. You know, I, you know, I couldn't call him Dick. But um, <laughs> well, because it is a big Dick Burns. Yeah, isn't it? Well, it's Richard, isn't it? It's <laughs> <laughs> Dick Burns. Oh dear. Um, yeah, I love Robin. He's a light in the darkness. He's the light that Batman. I feel. You know, I love. There's some great lines out there with Batman, and one of them stands out. You know, Batman is always, when he stares into the abyss, 
and the abyss stares back at him. I feel kind of what he sees there is represented in Robin. There's a good in man, yeah. as much as you know, he values life. He just he wants to protect people. Um, he never wants anything that happened like no. what happened to him. And you know, to see someone else suffer that, he takes Robin under his wing. All of the Robins, in in respect, you know, Jason Todd, you know, picks him off off the street. Yeah. Tim Drake, Tim figures out who Batman is. That they've each got a unique sort of yeah. appeal, you know, and even the female Robins as well. When Spoiler became the Robin, uh, Jim, I don't know sort of what comics you're reading, but I've you know I grew up going to like the market stool comic book man, um, mm, you know, right, in Wickham yeah. every awesome. every Tuesday, yeah. you know, I love that guy. Um, and I just picked up um, my comics were Nightwing, uh, the Batman, and and Robin, and even when you know um, uh, Spoiler took over as Robin, I just I, I gripping it for me. Robin is he's almost the balance between like what you kind of. Spider-Man and Batman do you know what I mean you get a Spider-Man mm, story with, yeah, with Robin like at high sort of, school yeah. sort of thing <laughs> and it, it's set in the Batman universe and I like I just I like that he's not able to beat everyone he really has to rely on his wits more so than Batman does you know because there's there's power levels it almost gets like yeah. Dragon Ball Z you know with, <laughs> with these characters it's like Batman is the most powerful mm. Nightwing mm. is powerful but not as smart as Tim Drake you know yeah, and it's yeah, sort well, of like you know. that's a good thing because there were such different characters who's your favourite Robin then? My favorite, I, I, you know, this is a really a personal question. Yeah, it really is. Um, Dick Grayson is probably my second favorite comic book character of all time. But I don't class him as a Robin anymore, just because he's become his own hero. He's got one of the best arcs in DC mm, Comics yeah. history. Mm. He knows everyone. He's got relationships with Superman, the Titans. He's, you know, basically had a relationship with some of the, yeah. the the hottest sort of females in the DC universe as well. He's got a great history that I love that he's been allowed to grow as a character. Um, you know, Damian Wayne is kind of a very, very cool Robin. I like that they actually were like, because it's always been Batman's adopted son. And I think, I want to say Tim Drake, but there's something about Damian and how he's been written up to this point, I like the fact that he's basically a mini Batman, mm. and he takes no, <laughs> and he's worse because his granddad's Rachel Ghoul. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it's just like, I don't give a shit. I'm the son of Batman and the demon's head. Mm. That's kind of a reputation. Yeah. There, you know? <laughs> I just, I love it, and I love the, um, the, 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 um, oh dear, the Batman and Robin where Dick Grayson took over as Batman. Yeah. Mm. That storyline just, oh, fantastic. Grant Morrison, e- epic. Um, who's your favorite Robin, dude? It's it, it is very difficult. I mean, I love Dick Grayson for the same reason you do. Like becoming night. I remember when we were watching the animated series, man. I knew nothing about Nightwing. Yeah, and since when I was very very young, and I was just like, where'd Robin go? And mm. then you had the whole thing of him training with everyone, and he becomes Nightwing, and then Tim Drake comes in. I really, ever since seeing Tim Drake as that young kid in the animated series, he's like what, maybe like twelve or thirteen. Yeah, I loved that and. I love the fact that he's more of a detective. Yeah. Like he's not supposed to be as good as a fighter as well, everyone. Well, Tim else. Tim Drake was my Robin in the comics mm. when I was sort of growing mm. up, sort of in the two thousand ones and all that. He was the Robin at the, the, the forefront of that, and yeah, he was all about the brains, mm. and I, I love mm. that aspect to him. Um, I have to say as well, Jason Todd. I don't think he's anyone's favorite Robin considering <laughs> not, everyone. Yeah. Not before you know. Death of a Family. Obviously, Death of a Family kind of Death in the Family. Well, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> Death in the Family. Um, I've, I've read that. nothing's really that great about it apart from the ending yeah, well, the last the, yeah, yeah like that's yeah. what it's all building towards but in terms of what he becomes afterwards and how it's developed with Batman from that he's incredible it's the go to arc yeah. for Batman and I feel when you sort of look at Batman and you know take away his crusade it Having the Robins and all the sidekicks, mm. Batgirls, Batwoman, you know, Batwing, you know, all this sort mm. of stuff having those guys and the Bat yeah. family around him it puts into perspective his crusade, his ability to inspire others, the the idea that he is just one man, um, a fantastic, epic dude, but there are limits, there's like, he will approach an age when he cannot do this anymore, mm. the yeah. mantle of the bat, I love the romance, the legacy of all of that, and you don't get that as much if you don't have those characters, if it is just Batman, you have the romantic sort of silent guardian, and you can go so far with those stories but they even did it in the Dark Knight Rises they were like we have to kind of bring yeah, Robin because yeah. Robin is an important part of this and yeah he doesn't have yeah. to wear green pants and little elf yeah. shoes you know I think you can get away with having a young Robin in the comics and the cartoons mm. but I, you know if they're going to explore it in the DCEU which they clearly are because we've seen yeah. the, the Robin mm. suit I want 
I want an old Robin. I want them to treat it like you're under my wing. Mm. I'm teaching you. This is a war. We're fighting crime. You know, because it's powerful. Yeah, but I yeah. feel that part of any Batman story, if him being older, is Jason Todd. Because mm. it's this whole thing of what we were talking about earlier about um, how much he needs Robin, like just to have him killed, man, and by the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just one of those things where there's respect for Batman and for how far he can be pushed that this guy literally killed his son. Yeah. His yeah. adopted son, he will not return that um return that favour, I guess. Yeah. It was but no, I I love the Jason Todd storyline. Yeah. And everyone else when Arkham Knight came out was very much against this was like this very samey idea. I think I was comic book like, yeah. fans were but against But I was just it, I was yeah. just like, why can't why don't you want this story told mm. again? Yeah, and you know, you know, it looks like it might be happening in a movie, but I, I, I definitely I want a different spin on it. You know? We'll have like a different spin on it. Yeah. We've seen it that much. Yeah, yeah, different to that third time. time. That's it. Yeah, third time for third the time fourth, fifth, sixth well, yeah, time for exactly. the fans. You know? mm. But yeah, general audiences, I think they need to see the Robin story. So, yeah. Jim, man, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, we like Robin. Well, we do actually, like who's your yeah. favorite Robin? Oh, it's got to be uh, Dick Grayson. Yeah, yeah, I did ask. Yeah, exactly. Did amazing. you? Yeah. I don't know where I've been. Never listened. <laughs> so Dick Grayson. Yeah. Dick Grayson. Uh, only because I grew up with a Batman anime series. Yeah. And oh, okay. Yeah. Just because he was there. Yeah. I, like, I love and I just, Those guys. Yeah. We're going to do a retrospective on that show, man. To watch all the, yeah. <laughs> Dick Grayson. Yeah. yeah 100%. Mm. He's the man. He's the man. Dude, thanks for all your questions, guys. As as we say, Twitter, at Team Cave and Cow. Let us know. Direct message us at any time, not even just when we're asking. Like, literally, we're so happy with the response we've been getting from these. 